Paterno family spokesman Dan McGinn, former U.S. Attorney General and Pennsylvania Governor Dick Thornburg, and Paterno family attorney Wick Sollers remain with us, and our conversation continues. To any one of the three of you, was the board negligent in its fiduciary responsibility by accepting the NCAA penalties, $60 million in fines, can't go to a ball game for four years, that costs you financially, they open up the door for actions against alleged victims or by alleged victims, and they agree to settlements or in the process are agreeing to settlements with those victims. By accepting all these findings, we're talking about $100 million or more out of the university coffers. Ought they be held to account if the reasoning behind that is flawed? I certainly would say that the board panicked and that there was a lack of leadership and what ended up occurring was a real failure of governance. And the consequence of that is that we people want to believe we closed the books we know the end result here and you that you know the damage that was done the, the NCAA wants to make the argument uh, that they needed to act precipitously it needed to be urgent because this was such an extraordinary problem you know, the lawyers here can make the better case than I can, but that's exactly the situation where you should be careful, deliberate, the rules should be followed, it should be transparent so that we end up with a result that holds up over time. Two things here, and on both, any of you can jump in. I've made this point on the air before. What Jerry Sandusky did was so heinous that it's understandable that people believe that anything short of a blanket condemnation and the harshest possible penalties somehow indicates lack of sufficient revulsion about Sandusky and lack of sufficient concern about his victims. But what you're saying is that in the process of all that, the facts have been, have been lost or misstated and there have been collateral damage, none of it remotely equal to the damage done to Sandusky's victims, but significant nonetheless, and on that aspect, you're hoping to set the record straight. Is that correct? That's correct. And the combination of the free report with its unsupported extreme conclusions as adopted almost immediately by the NCAA created an environment where no one could be thoughtful and really speak out and point out the flaws of the report and the flaws in the action of the NCAA. If you tried to raise any point whatsoever, you were shouted down as a defender of child sex abusers, and it was an impossible environment to do so. We're now doing so thoughtfully, and we believe this lawsuit is going to bring to bear a lot of information about what really occurred in the aftermath of the free report and the damage that was done to the Penn State community, which is a fantastic university, great faculty, great students, alums, and they've all been damaged dramatically by this free report and the immediate adoption by the NCAA. Nobody's trying to minimize Sandusky's crimes. Absolutely not. But does the NCAA have the jurisdiction to act as it did, or is its proper purview only the questions of universities gaining unfair competitive advantages and various other potential violations listed in the NCAA rule book, but that doesn't include this. That's what their own charter says. It's going to be very interesting to see how their <clears throat> defense to a lawsuit addresses the issue of where they get the authority to impose these kinds of sanctions as a result of these kinds of actions. What about the broad idea of lack of institutional control, which is often cited by the NCAA when they sanction a university? You could say that somewhere along the line here, pretty clearly there was a lack of institutional control or Penn State would have responded differently. They have never invoked the lack of institutional control when there was not an underlying rules violation. This is the first time ever. And in the course of that, they have accorded no due process, no opportunity for any of the involved or even the uninvolved, which are the, the students and the, the alums, et cetera, to have any opportunity to rebut uh, what, what was issued in the free report and adopted by the NCAA and crammed down to the university through threats and coercion. And Bob, if I can just summarize to make sure the audience knows here what, what happened. Free issues his report. The NCAA had suspended any investigation. They did no investigation of any kind. They adopt that report in full, without any question, any review, within 11 days. 
They did, they did not follow their own rules, and they didn't even understand the, the, the limits inside the free report, and then they took these actions. So people were allowed to talk to free anonymously. Uh, people, there were, there, the, the NCAA...